The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Many times during the past few years since we have moved our Worldwide Broadcasting Network and Spiritual Renaissance Institute corporate headquarters up here near the great mountains, waterfalls, and giant redwood trees of Yosemite National Park high in the Sierras, in the past few years many times I've driven down into the San Joaquin Valley, which lies just below our headquarters ranch. Now, the San Joaquin is the most fruitful agricultural farmland in the world rich in melons, vineyards, and vegetable growth. But frequently, this fertile valley is shrouded in dense and impenetrable mist. Tule, or valley fog, it is called. From an aircraft window, it looks like a great gray woolen blanket spread out across the hills, mountains, and meadows of the San Joaquin, as if the deity had dropped a thick, quilted cloak to the earth, where it nestled into the curvature and crevasses between the California coast and the inland mountain ranges. But to walk or to drive through this fog is bewildering. Even at noontime, the visibility may be measured in but a few feet and inches, not in miles. Airports are closed down entirely. Interstate highway traffic is reduced to a crawl or a halt. Train and rail passage are perilous. You can frequently see no further than your own headlights and hood ornament. If fortunate, you may steer by the rear lights of the vehicle ahead. But even in broad daylight, Often you glimpse but the halogen halos of other headlights. The fog is so dense as to render orientation nearly impossible. You can't see street signs, stop signs, road markers, and barely even the white and yellow painted stripes. And so, following a recent business trip, after hours of creeping along at an agonizingly slow pace, I at last head for the mountains again. North, up Highway 41 I drive, surrounded by the blinding gray mist past invisible grape vineyards, olive groves, almond orchards, fields fruitful with lush vegetation and the myriad fragrances of furrow and farm. On north I drive, ascending with the winding hilly highway, 500, 700, 1200 feet above sea level, landscape and topography obscured by mist on all sides. Yet I persist mile after mile toward the mountains to the north, knowing full well that if I will only keep on, sooner or later I shall burst through that low blanket of fog into the clear sunlight of those magnificent mountains above, 1,500 feet above sea level, 1,700 mile after winding mile, vision seriously obscured, eyes exhausted. With meticulous care, I keep driving up higher, 1,900, 2,300 feet elevation. The fog seems just as thick as ever perhaps even worse. I squint through the droplet-dotted windshield into the murky, misty monotony of gray before me, when suddenly, without warning, as I approach the 3,000-foot level where my ranch lies like a silver knife blade piercing a velvet cloth, the chromium grill of my car cuts through the last few feet of fog, and I slice the sunlight with my wet windshield, and suddenly I can see with perfect visibility clear cobalt blue sky, the fresh green of ponderosa pine and sequoias, red, purple, and pink wildflowers beside the highway, and stretching for acres off across the pastures and meadows to the east and to the west. But after hours and miles of patient navigation through seemingly endless fog, quite suddenly and quite without warning, I have cleft the cold mist, and all around me, and all beyond me, is crystalline clear and sparkling in sunshine. It has happened to me time and time again, both here in these mountains and in my life. For there have been scores of incidents during my tenure of time on this planet during which I simply have had to press on persistently, yet without external verification, knowing that if I would but continue the climb, I would eventually break through into the sunlight of spiritual clarity as I neared the summit of my journey, and you likewise may be surrounded by the swirling mists and frustrating fogs of uncertainty over a thousand things in your life, yet know with absolute assurance that if you will press on undaunted, you will in time burst through the haze of hesitation and bewilderment 
into the clear sunlight of spiritual certainty. You need only have the faith to press on with persistence. God loves you. There lies before you a bright future, splendid with hope and joy, if you will only keep on. For quite suddenly and quite unexpectedly, if you will only keep on, you will in time burst into the sunlight of the summits. Therefore, trust in God. Press on regardless, and all things will come in time to you, said the Master. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Ask, and you will receive. God's will for you is good, unqualifiedly good. Keep living by it and pressing toward it and praying for it and yearning for it in your soul, and you shall know spiritual victory, the victory of living as the son or the daughter of God. You were born to be, and in truth, you really are. That is your nature. You were born with a spiritual hunger within your soul, and nothing but God can satiate that spiritual hunger. And if you will thus live in faith, you may to others at times appear to be a peculiar person. For the true follower of Christ is one who feels a supreme love for one whom he has never seen, talks in a familiar way every day to someone he cannot see, empties himself in order to be full, admits he is wrong in order to be right, goes down in order to get up, is strongest when he is weakest, richest when he is poorest, and often the happiest when he feels the worst or is in the worst circumstances. He dies in order that he may live, forsakes in order to have, gives away so that he can keep, sees the invisible, hears the inaudible, and knows that which passes all human knowledge. The man or woman who knows God has an assurance, which is not mere intellectual assent. It is experience. It is not just hearsay. You are not a copy, not a facsimile, but an original, because firsthand you have come to know your Creator. And you have dared to give your life to the living God who gave you your life originally. In the year 1798, Napoleon Bonaparte set out on his expedition into Egypt. Much to the disgust of his soldiers and officers, he took with him a considerable company of scientists and philosophers. And on one warm summer night, these men were gathered together on the deck of their French flagship. The heavens were brilliant. These scientists were discussing whether or not the planets might be inhabited. Some thought they were, others that they were not. Then they began to discuss the origin of the universe, most of them taking the position that natural law and natural phenomena were sufficient to account for the origin of the world without a divine creator, without a god. But then, suddenly, Napoleon himself, who had been standing near to them and silently listening to their conversation, introduced himself into the debate, and pointing with his hand up to the brilliant host of the stars in the heavens, said, Gentlemen, who made these? A simple question, but one which went to the very heart of the matter. Who made it all? The world, the skies, the suns, the stars, the planets. This world is a great effect, the philosopher said, and common sense declares it must have a sufficiently great cause. The world is not only a great effect, but also an intelligent effect. It must have had a sufficiently intelligent cause to have created it. Thus, back of all the nebular hypotheses, the original amino acids, the stardust, the primordial organic soup, there must have been some great creative secret. And the key to it all is the opening four words of the Judeo-Christian scriptures, which read, In the beginning... God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Have faith in God. God created you, and not merely as a celestial science experiment. God created you for a plan. You were born for a purpose. Press on. Keep on in faith. As the son or daughter of God you are, and the brother or sister to humanity you were born to be. Live in faith. Worry is simply one form of atheism, stated a noted philosopher. When you worry, you are believing in circumstances rather than believing in God, he says. 
And when you regain your trust in God, you will stop worrying about your circumstances. Have faith in God. Press on through the fog, through the mist, through the uncertainty, through the haze of hesitation, through every impediment to your life. Press forward toward the high calling of God in your life, and you shall burst through the darkness of doubt into the sunlight of faith, and you shall know in whom you have believed, and you shall come to know God and enjoy him forever. If you are intrigued by the things I've been saying on this broadcast, whether you're hearing it somewhere around the world or on a cassette recording of it, write to us for free literature on the spiritual life at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, The Fatherhood of God and the Brotherhood of Man. How can you enrich and enliven your inner spiritual life? Write for this free literature to us. No cost, no charge, no obligation to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.